What's going on, everyone? So, there have been reports that, A, the Lakers are looking, or there's a growing sense that the Lakers are interested in acquiring an all-star level guard, that they believe that, hey, we may need an all-star level guard to compete with the Western Conference, right? You look at all these teams, SGA, Jean Morant, right? Uh, Jamal Murray, right? Like, you go down the list, and it's just like every team has that, like, premier guard that can just do a little bit of everything for the team and carry a lot of the workload, right? So there is this sense of like, hey, we really could go and use uh, that type of all-star level guard. Problem is, there's very few, if any, really on the market, right? You got like Zach Levine, who I'm really high on, you know, that's an all-star level guard, not like a year in and year out all-star level guard, but he is a guy that has been an all-star. He gives you the production and type of efficiency and scoring. He's making the money, right? Like, and he got that money for a reason, right? So, like it's like that and then there's Trey Young right Trey Young has been linked to the Lakers since last season there's a lot of time there was talks that like it was essentially I mean Kendrick Perkins on national television basically said Trey Young was going to be a Laker this season <laughs> and so far it hasn't happened but like there was talks that like yeah it's probably going to happen right there were like were genuine reports that were like it's probably inevitable that Trey ends up on the Lakers at some point and then it just went completely dead I mean, we haven't heard anything, but you're starting to hear some pickups again, not necessarily about the Lakers. Yes, the Lakers, because the Lakers are looked at as the sole team that one could use that him Two, he apparently really wants to go to the Lakers, but more so just like in general that like one Atlanta probably would be in their best interest to get off Trey Two, Trey kind of wants to get out three. He's being regularly advised. You need to get out of Atlanta. Atlanta hit the, the youth route. Right, they have a bunch of young talent. Supposedly, they may end up having some fire sale and look trade Hunter and uh, you know Bogdanovich and uh, Clint Capella and guys like that, which signals like they're ready to just hit the reset button and rebuild. Right. So, and Trey has been public about like, hey, I don't want to go through this rebuild. I don't want to spend three, four, five years of going through rebuild. Now I'm 30, 31, and it just you know I'm not even a playoff team. Right. Like he, he's at some point is gonna ask to be moved asked to go and if the Lakers were ever going to trade for him this season would probably be the best season to do so because one he's making 43 million this year right which you know, is a lot don't get me wrong but he's also 26 years old he leads the league in assists every year right the guy's giving you you know 25 or I think this season is like 22 but you know usually he's around like 25 and 12 right like the guy is elite right the guy is an excellent player right but he's making 43 million this year, 46 million next year. It's 45.999, so 46 million. And then he has a player option for 48 million, which he'll probably opt into, and then he'll be due for a new contract, right? So he's your best to trade him now. So that way, you know, you kind of have him, and then you can kind of work out what you need to work out, right? Like, so you can get him if. Atlanta's like, hey, we just match salaries. Then Gabe, Vincent, D'Angelo, Russell, and Rui Hachimura, boom, there you go, right? And Atlanta may be willing to do that because, again, if they're going to hit the reset button, right, D'Angelo Russell's an expiring contract, so they immediately get $18.5 million off the books. Get a guy in Rui Hachimura that makes sense, but he only has one more year on his deal, so you could look to flip him next season. Same thing with Gabe Vincent. He only has one more year on his deal. It's like, would you rather pay you know, 11 million and 17 million or 43 million. It's just, it's easier to get off of those other contracts if need be. Also, they're expiring contracts. So, you know, teams that want to get off the salary, you know, Atlanta could always play that role and like, hey, we have 28 million in expiring that we could trade next season, right? Just, it gives them some flexibility. Obviously, the Lakers would probably have to give up both their first. So you're probably trading both first in order to do so. And then there you go. Trey Young would be a Laker. Now, you know, could there be something else? Maybe they want Austin Reeves instead of Gabe Vincent or whatever. Would the Lakers be willing to trade Austin Reeves for Trey? If it's me, yes, right? Like, look, if you could get Trey, I think you do. I think there is an argument for Zach Levine over Trey Young just because of the natural fit. Trey Young is he's younger, star potential, healthier, right? Like, Trey makes a lot of sense, especially with Anthony Davis. Trey Young and Anthony Davis as a duo makes all the sense in the world. They could end up being one of the best, if not the best duo in the league you know, when LeBron leaves, right? Because his ability to just play, make, and facilitate and do all that stuff, and he'll just make Anthony Davis' life so easy, right? I mean, he probably, he averages 12 and a half assists right now. He'd probably average 15, if not more, alongside Anthony Davis, right? 
And if anyone can kind of mask Trey Young's lack of defense, it's Anthony Davis, right? And you put, you know, another, if you get like a Dorian Finney-Smith or something like that, saw it alongside Trey Young, right? So that way you have some defense point of attack. At that point, you know, maybe you're, you know, starting Cam Reddish or something like that. Because, you know, between Dorian Finney-Smith, Trey Young, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, you have more than enough of offense and offensive generated. Uh, you can kind of use that kind of defense, right? So I, I, I don't hate the idea of Trey Young, especially long-term wise. And I mean, even after Anthony Davis, you'd still have a star that you could kind of build around. But there's a couple concerns that I have with Trey, right? One is, can he, like, does he make sense for the style of offense that J.J. Redick wants to run? And if so, who's going to conform, right? Like, who's going to who's gonna switch up their style, right? Because Trey is one of the most high-usage players ever, right? He is the offensive system. Ball's in his hand. He's making all the decisions. He's making all the plays. He's doing all the dirty work, right? And then you look at the Lakers. Their offense is about player movement, ball movement, right? Like, ball doesn't stick. It's not one guy dominating the basketball. Yeah, LeBron has his moments, has his stretches. But for the most part, it's just – it's. Reeves initiating, we've seen, you know, AD initiate, connect initiate, guys are initiating, and then you're getting in your actions, right? Is that something that Trey would be kind of willing to get into? Possibly, maybe be willing to do that because it would take some pressure off of him to have to do everything. So maybe be like, yeah, that's great, right? Like now I don't have to be the engine, right? Like I can focus on the other things. Like I can still get, still probably average 10 assists, right? Get the assist, but... I can also focus on the things that the Lakers need, which is scoring and getting to the basket and setting up Anthony Davis and so on and so forth, right? Like, so I do have the questions, though. It's something that's at least worth asking. And then LeBron James, right? LeBron has talked about wanting to be off ball more, right? And to his, to his credit, he has fit in better to the style of offense that we're playing. But in, like, the Magic Johnson role. Right? He's the guy that's on ball. He's the guy that's making the plays. He's playing the Trey Young role. And we've seen the Lakers time and time again go and get a guy to try to let LeBron play more off ball, and then LeBron just ends up being on ball the whole time. Right, So it's like, it's one thing to say, yes, I want to play off ball. It's another thing to actually be willing to do so. Right, And it would be nice to have Trey, because like you could have Trey and LeBron. One of them could always be on the court at all times. Right, so you always would have a playmaker on the court that is elite playmaking wise. Although LeBron's turnover issues have been a problem this season, but he is still, you know, elite playmaker. Um, so, you know, it, it does kind of beg the question of like, can LeBron and Trey coexist? Right, can the two of them operate and work together? We saw Dejounte Murray and Trey just essentially implode each other, right, and it just didn't work. Now, obviously, LeBron James is a souped up version, <laughs> right, of like what DeJounte Murray is, right? But still, it's like, would it be clunky? I, ju I just, I have my concerns. I'm not saying you don't do it, right? I think you do it and you kind of figure it out. But, and, and it wouldn't be like people, like what I've talked about Trey in the past, people are like, well, it's just a Russell Westbrook situation. Over no, it's not even close. One, like Trey is like in his prime. Two, he actually can shoot, right? Like that's the problem with Russ is he couldn't shoot. And, also, Trey with the playmaking, so even when he is having an off night, he could still still go get you 30 points and in, in assists, right? Like, just by playmaking and slicing a part of defense. So, right, there's value there. Obviously, the defensive issues and concerns, the lack of athleticism, right, concerns, right? There's still definitely concerns with Trey, but it's just like you're very limited on the options. And if you really, if the Lakers really are serious about trying to get an all-star guard, you know, you could do worse than Trey. And... You know, obviously, he's a guy that can close games for you. He's a guy that's not afraid of the moment. Big playoff performer, right? He led a team to the conference finals. Right? Like, And it's just, he, he again, he, there, there are a lot of pros to Trey. There are also a lot of cons. And you have to put the right pieces around him. If this was like prime LeBron, where he could just, you know, lock down defensively and just dominate, imagine him as like a cutter and slasher. I mean, stop, right? Like, but he's not, right? He's not the same LeBron. He's still an incredible talent, still a top 10 talent, but he's not the same LeBron, particularly on the defensive side. So you really need, if you're going to go get Trey, you're really going to need some defensive pieces, right? You're really going to need, you know, like ideally two two-way guys, but you don't have that. Like Connect gives you the shooting, but defensively, right? Like, is he the best option alongside uh, Dalton Connect? Probably not, right? Like, unless he can kind of, 
take some real strides defensively. So it's like, okay, well, if you could get a healthy Jared Vanderbilt, that would, you know, feed families, right? Like healthy Jared Vanderbilt, you could slot him alongside uh, a uh, uh, Trey Young, and then at that point, you if you want to do Dalton Connect or whatever you could, right? Like um, if you get Trey, there's almost an argument to just like if Vando's healthy, just go with like Vando and Reddish. Just to have like the two big versatile wings, unless you get like a Dorian Finney. If you get a Dorian Finney Smith, then I think you get that too. Because the Lakers could get Trey and then still go get, you know, a Dorian Finney Smith or something like that, right? Like they're not, it's not like, oh, Trey and that's it. Because he's making the same money as Zach Levine is. And I've talked about like you can get Zach Levine and other pieces, right? So to me, if you get Trey, you have to get the compliment. You have to get like a Dorian Finney Smith in, in, in a separate trade, right? Got to get some type of defense, um, you know, two way guy. And, you know, I mean, at that point, I trade whatever you have to trade. And, you know, can you get a Dennis Schroeder and, you know, because, uh, uh, okay, so if you're talking trade 43 million, right? If the, let's say the Lakers were willing to trade Reeves, right? So you could do like Reeves, D'Lo, Rui, get you to trade, right? Actually get you a little more, um, but that's fine because you're going to need to fill out a roster, right? So you get to Trey, because um, that'd get you, what, $47 million? But that $4 million is a factor, right? That $4 million is a big difference, right? Um, so then you're looking at, like, okay, you could use a backup center, and you could use a 3 and D wing, ideally. So you could get, like, a Dayron Sharp, and you could get, like, uh, you know, a Dorian Finney-Smith, and that could make some sense. But I'd really love to go get, like, a Dennis Schroeder. Right, to have like, yeah, he doesn't have the size, but just that defense. And if he can maintain the shooting that he shot, although he's probably best with the ball in his hand, so maybe that's not the best option, but it's like, who else is there? Um, but it really boils down, like, would they be willing to trade Reeves? Because if they would be willing to trade Reeves, then you could get like a Dorian Finney-Smith and another piece, right? Like, because you'd still have like Jared Vanderbilt, Max Christie, um, Gabe Vincent, Right, so there's another 28 million in salary, and that's not co- counting Jalen Hochefino, which would give you another 3.3 million. It's not counting, um, you know, a vet minimum guy. So you could get to another 30, 33 million, roughly, and then still have salary space to go and bring in, you know, two or three guys that you need. Right, so you know, if they were willing to trade everybody, and like if you could end up with like a Trey Young, Dorian Finney-Smith, and then. You need another like three and D wing that would be available. Um, or, or like, could you get from like Chicago? Could you get like just an IO, right? Cause he's like a six, five point of attack, three and D guard, like something like that, where you still maintain some size, right? Like get like a Dorian Finney Smith, day Ron Sharp, and then go get like an IO from Chicago Zero team. That's willing to sell the farm, right? Like point is like, can you get, if you get Trey, can you get two, two way guys, not even have to be elite, just like, you know, league average from three-point range and be able to defend. If you can do that, then yes, I think now you're probably the best team in the league. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, and I pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you think that, like, yeah, like, look, there's definitely questions about Trey, but if you can make it work, go get Trey, make it happen. Do you think? No. Absolutely not. Stay as far away from Trey Young as possible. Um, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I love to hear it either way. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.